YouTube, I'm Nick Too Sick here back with another fishing video. It's uh, February 22nd, closing out on the month, so it's time for the California Delta Fishing Report for February 2018. I'm going to keep it short this month because it hasn't been too sweet, to be honest, you guys. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and pretend like I'm catching a whole bunch of fish, you guys, because I'm not. I'm catching maybe a couple a day if I'm lucky. And uh, this is this is what I'm doing. Uh, first and foremost, this month I've uh, I've been doing a lot. I've really just been trying to beat these fish to death with reaction baits, really with no um, real success. Throwing chatter baits and spinner baits, even in the bad weather, it just just hasn't been working out for me lately. It's been it's been really cold and it's been windy and. Um, you know, I just haven't been haven't been doing as good as I, I did in January. Um, with that being said, though, I'm still catching fish. I'm electing to fish on days like today right now where it's uh, bluebird skies. It's still really cold. The water is about 52 to 55, and uh, it's still really cold. So the reaction baits are out right now. And uh, everything I'm throwing is very, very slow moving and close to the bottom. So what I'm throwing is um, the bass jig in black and red. I'll throw this, you know, three, three weeks out of the month I'll throw this and uh, do, you know, do, do well on this. This will always catch fish in any body of water if uh, there's crawdads in the water then they'll eat a bass jig especially a black and red one um I, I prefer black and red the the crawfish out here where i live are really really bright red with some black in there that black helps stand out in um muddy waters the waters are pretty muddy right now so jig it up you guys in addition to that jig i also throw in my orange jig this is what i actually have tied on now today it was just a full moon um, a couple days ago, so I've mentioned it on the channel before that juvenile crawfish, the crawdads molt during around the full moon. So for the first two or three days before and after the full moon, um, I switch up colors. This one here is just an orange. These these juvenile crawfish, they the adults are a big bright red. And the juvenile molting craws look more of like an orangish brown color. So um, I use both the same trailer. This is a Rage Bug by Strike King here with Falcon Falcon Craw, I believe, is the color on that one. And then this is also the same bait. I have no idea what the name of the color is on that. It just matches the bait. So those are my two presentations with crawdad jigs. Um, this is going to be my last munch throwing throwing the Cooch's Wada jigs. I'm going to be retiring those. I got some really nice new jigs, new company out, putting out new jigs. We're still testing them right now. They're not available, but they should be come next month. So I'm looking forward to showing um, you guys and girls the new jigs that are going to be featured on the channel. Um, in addition to... The jigs, what else I'm throwing right now is pretty simple. I'm throwing a Texas rig. This is what I'm throwing is a, um, basically this is a Strike King. What is that? A, what is a, it's called a Rage Craw. This is in the Delta Red color. This is absolutely phenomenal bait year round on the Delta. This is basically the same kind of deal as uh, the jig. I'll flip and pitch this into cover hoping to get a bite on the drop I don't at this time of year these bass are really really lethargic you guys they are not really suspended in the water column here's the bottom and uh, these bass park right down in the mud they actually stick their bellies the big ones stick their gut down in the mud and anchor themselves in the mud that keeps them from getting swept away with the current and also the mud is is warm and it insulates the the bottom of, of their bodies and you know they can get a little bit of relief from the cold by doing that they are not chasing at all right now it is way too cold um, 
So my presentation is quite simply just throwing it out there, letting it fall to the bottom, and I'm just slowly dragging it, slowly dragging it, shake it a little bit, slowly drag it. It's seriously taken me two to five minutes to get that jig back in the boat from the point where I throw it out. Um, I'm not catching fish out on the main rivers. The water's muddy. It's windy. It's I've been really discouraged this month. I've actually retreated to the safety of Discovery Bay is where I've been fishing this month. And uh, whenever things get really, really bad, I tend to retreat to Discovery Bay. I used to live out there. I know the water really, really well. With all the houses, I can get out of the current. I can get out of the wind. And uh, I'm really, really comfortable fishing in uh, man-made structures like docks and pilings, bridges, that sort of thing. So Discovery Bay is where I'm fishing. I'm throwing these jigs up underneath the docks. I'm not even bothering throwing them, you know, in shallow waters. I'm throwing these baits at the very end, of the, sh the deep end of the docks. I'm not throwing it shallow and pulling it through. I'm I'm ignoring the shallow waters right now, and I'm going for the deep ends of the docks underneath the hydra hoists, underneath the fingers of the docks, and that's starting to produce. I'm, I'm catching some big bucks, which means the fish are somewhat starting to think about moving up. I would say we are in... You know, a pre-transition phase, everybody gets really excited, the sun's coming out, you know, the spawn is a couple weeks away, but in reality, we've had a much colder winter than in the past, so I'm personally thinking that the spawn isn't going to come as soon this month, so we need to be patient for the next month and keep continue to throw slow baits, continue to throw your Texas rigs, continue to throw your jigs. I'm also throwing a shaky head. I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the difference. As you can see, I got the same bait on here with a slightly different presentation. I am a fan of the Strike King, the, um, you know, the Rage Craw. This one here, as you can see, I have ready for a Texas rig, size 4 EWG hook. And I'll use, you know, a quarter ounce to a half ounce bullet weight on this. Now, the point I want to make with these two presentations is bobber stop. Now, those of you who watch my channel and are familiar with my channel know that when I throw a Texas rig, I do not use a bobber stop, ladies and gentlemen. When I do a Texas rig, I like my bullet weight to freely slide up and down my line. I feel like that gives me a, a higher bite ratio. I'll throw the bait out. The weight will sink faster than the bait. And that will give me a couple of seconds of this bait being weightless to fall down. And when these fish grab onto that, they don't feel that weight. They hold on a little bit longer. And I just feel like I get bit better when I do not bobber stop my Texas rigs. So... Sometimes I do, but, you know, 90% of the time, I do not. When I feel the need to use a bobber stop, when I want my weight pinned into position, I don't even throw a Texas rig. I throw a shaky head, because essentially you're getting the same thing. You have your weight attached to your hook, and it's one unit opposed to two. And also, you get the uniqueness of this shaky head, when you're throwing a bullet weight, your, your bait is going to hit the bottom and it's just going to fall horizontally like that. And you're going to actually pull it and drag it horizontally. Opposed to with a shaky head, when you throw it out there, as you can see, the shaky head has the flatter head. So when it sinks, it actually lands vertical in the water column and stays vertical. And, you know, that that's what I want. So... That's why a lot of the time you'll see me throwing a shaky head more often than a Texas rig. I'll throw the Texas rig, like I said, without the bobber stop because I do like the action of the weight hitting the ground first. It's almost like a Carolina rig where there's you get a couple seconds there, like I said, of that bait free falls. And um, it's just very natural looking and very natural feeling to the bass, which will not only get you bit more often, but will get them to hold that bait a little bit longer. They'll suck it down opposed to, you know, it feeling unnatural and then spitting them out 
rather quickly, which you will tend to get a little bit more with the shaky head. So that's why I do that. Um, you know, you, you get the, the benefits of both doing how I said, you know, I don't really see the benefits of pinning a bobber stop to your uh, Texas rig and then just dragging it across the bottom. I guess, you know, that does, that does work and there's times and places that call for that, but, you know, my theory and my way of thinking, my comfort zone is doing it as I've described. So try that. As you can see, I'm working on the crawdad bite right now. The, um, I, the water in Discovery Bay in some areas has hit 55. Like I said, the water's 52 to 55. Once the water gets to 55 degrees, the crawdads actually do start getting more active. So I'm like really waiting for this water, really searching for 55 degree water so I can do these techniques as um, described. So other than that, basically... The bite has just been real finessey, like I said. I, I, you know, the the rattle trap isn't working, the spinner bait isn't working, the chatter bait isn't working. Even you know, the more natural paddle tail, very natural presentation is not working. They just do not want to chase right now. So that is why I've been doing the slow moving baits, dragging on the bottom, shaking, and I'm not popping them aggressively. I'm just lifting them off of the bottom. It's not a pop. It's a lift. So there is a difference. You know, it's not a sporadic jump. It's a small lift. And that's getting me bit. Um, however, the bait I am throwing this month and catching the most fish on is a drop shot. And uh, the drop shot I throw in these really, really cold waters are is a little bit unconventional. I don't see anybody else doing it. Um, I have shared it before, and this is a technique that I, I honestly I don't like to share because it is so productive and different from what other people are doing. However, I'm going to give this one to you guys today, so just give me a second to grab it. Now, we all know pretty much about drop shotting, and, uh, you know, I, I'm not big on the drop shot. However, when it's time to pick up the drop shot, I, I don't discriminate. I... I do use it, and I feel like that time has come for the drop shot. So how I normally throw the drop shot is I use the Delta drop shot, which is quite simply, you know, heavy-duty version of um, a regular drop shot, which you would find in a, in a lake or, you know, a different type of body of water that isn't as tidal or as weeded as the California Delta is. So um, since it's winter and the weeds have really backed off, this is what I am throwing on my drop shot right now. This is a two and a half inch uh, little paddle tail swim bait. This is made by uh, I think this is called a yum a yum. This is my, made by Yum. 